the two-month-long public lecture strike may be headed for a rocky end following the decision by some of the striking lecturers to resume work. Nyata University and more university are seeking for an in-house solution to the strike by asking lecturers who have been on strike to resume work. The Technical University of Kenya was the first to make an offer to striking lecturers, with some of them reported to have signed committal letters that have seen studies resume at the institution. With lecturers slowly trooping back to lecture halls, will the centre to really hold for the unions? That's the question we're asking this morning on a news center. Thank you very much for staying with us. And also, thank you for the comments that I'm getting on my Twitter handle. Remember that we're asking you this morning um, if uh, the unions should now call off the university lecturer strike. Let's know your to think about it. I've seen quite a number of students uh, tweeting and saying, indeed, it's time because they have lost so much time and ground with their classwork. But also, let me hear your, your voice on this one. Should the unions now call of the public university's lecturers strike. Um, continue tweeting, KT News Center is the hashtag or tweet me at Betty M. Kial. Let's now have a discussion here in studio with the uh, Vice Chancellor uh, for Kenyatta University, Professor Paul Wainaina. Thank you very much, Professor, for joining us here on News Center once more. All right, so let's talk about the situation currently at Kenyatta University. How many lecturers can you say have already signed these committal letters to go back to work? Uh, thank you very much, uh, mm -hmm. Betty. Mm -hmm. Uh, first of all, I would like to take this opportunity, first of all, to say pole to people in Solai. Mm. Actually, I come from this area, and uh, I'm sure some of my uh, relatives have been uh, affected. Pole. Secondly, I would like to also uh, take this opportunity to thank uh, the, uh, the studio and our viewers for actually switching on when I'm going to say a few things, clarify certain things mm. about the strike, and in particular in Kenyatta University. Right. Uh, Betty, as you know, this strike has taken two months, and uh, I also want to clarify that uh, the uh, staff union is uh, representing uh, three cadre of uh, our staff, and uh, when we started in March, the three unions that represent uh, university public uh, uh, you know, workers uh, went on strike. Mm -hmm. But afterwards, the strike was actually declared uh, unprotected and therefore illegal. So one of the unions uh, called off the strike. And right now, we are having uh, WASO, which represent the academic staff. Yes and also uh, KUSU, which represent non-teaching staff at the, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, the middle level. And uh, what has happened, uh, Betty, is that uh, since March uh, 1st, we have not had any learning uh, in most of the public universities. Mm. And I can say uh, for Kenyatta University, it's only parklands our school of law, mm -hmm. where the lecturers who teach law decided to obey the law. And I, I really appreciate uh, what they have done. And because of that, uh, these have been having 100% classes, All right. and therefore they are ready for examination. Mm -hmm. So after two months, as management in Kenyatta University, mm -hmm. we felt that this is taking too long. It is really hurting so much. And we decided to sit down mm -hmm. with our lecturers. And uh, we had a meeting, uh, their chairman. We sat down and we decided that um, perhaps, even if we don't completely call off the strike, mm -hmm. can we have some things happening at the university? Meanwhile, the CBA negotiations continue. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, when the chairman of department sat down, uh, members of staff felt that, uh, yes, what they could do, they could sign and uh, decide to come back to, uh, to class. Meanwhile, negotiations with the government uh, continue. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, uh, uh, continue. Mm -hmm. And therefore, on Monday 7, we asked the students who had gone home mm -hmm. And we asked the lecturers to start teaching. Um, 
it was a, um, a very uh, you know slow uh, pace because uh, most of the students had gone home but uh, eventually we were able to start mm -hmm. but of course um, some of the union activists um, uh, try to persuade the lecturers not actually to uh, go back to, uh, all to work. All right. And therefore, uh, we had uh, a bit of a scaffold mm -hmm. uh, on Monday, but uh, things have really improved. Uh, as of yesterday, 65% mm -hmm. of our lecturers have been teaching and the classes are going on now. All right. And we hope that uh, when all the students come back, uh, we are going to have uh, 100 percent particularly uh you know probably next week all right so when you say 65 percent um is in operations is this five percent of the lecturers or the entire fraternity of the school uh, uh betty we have a uh, uh, seven uh, campuses mm -hmm. and therefore what we are saying is that uh, like the main campus mm -hmm. yesterday it was like uh, uh 70 percent mm -hmm. Uh, Kitui campus, uh, it was a uh, 40%. Uh, City campus, uh, 70%. And uh, when you take the average, mm -hmm. actually it was a 65% classes going oh, on. All right, that is across uh, across all, yes. all all the institutions. Yeah. All right, so we understand also that there are work committee letters that you know were signed. I don't know if that's what also happened at Kenyatta University. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened is that uh, during the meeting with lecturers, with the chairman of departments and the deans, mm -hmm. they were told it will be important for you to commit yourself mm -hmm. because it will be very bad for us to call the students to come back and then there is no teaching. Mm -hmm. So uh, they committed themselves in writing that they were going to teach. And after that, then we ask the KUSA uh, leaders, uh, that is the uh, you know, student uh, union uh, leaders, mm -hmm. to help us to tell the students to come back. Mm. And therefore, the signing was really to try and make sure that uh, when we ask the students to come back, mm then they will be teaching. All right. Yeah. So let's talk about the teachers, um, you know, who have not reported or who will not come back uh, to work, even after, you know, the university, you know, has stepped in. What happens to them? Are there going to be any punitive measures against them? I, I think, uh, Betty, what happens is that, uh, first of all, mm -hmm. they know very well that uh, this strike is not protected. Mm -hmm. So it's illegal. And they were ordered by court to go back to work. At the moment, we have been able to persuade, uh, uh, you know, uh, a very high percentage of, uh, you know, of our lecturers to come back. Mm -hmm. But those who want to continue disobeying the court orders, uh, at the moment, there is nothing we can do. After all, they have a right to do that. Mm -hmm. But the only thing we ask is mm -hmm. that we, they don't try to disrupt those who want to teach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I want to hear your thoughts about, um, you know, first of all, this agitation by, you know, by, by the lecturers. Indeed, they are demanding, you know, for, you know, for what they say is rightfully theirs. They're also, of course, uh, you know, putting some universities on the spot, saying that some uh, statutory deduct, uh, deductions are not remitted by uh, universities. What do you, what is your take on this? I think, uh, Betty, this issue is uh, obviously it is very important for us to try and understand what is happening. Mm -hmm. um, we had the previous CBA signed, and unfortunately, we did not actually factor in mm -hmm. pension for staff members. Mm -hmm. In other words, the government did not give the pension aspect mm -hmm. of, the, you know, uh, of the package. And therefore, the universities will not be able actually to remit uh, deductions for pensions simply because they were not actually factored in. Mm -hmm. There are some universities that have been trying to uh, actually, uh, you know, uh, submit something, but actually it is not possible when you have not been given that package by the government. Mm -hmm. So it is true, we have not been able to uh, submit, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some of the statutory uh, deduction, mm -hmm. 
and this is simply because they were not actually factored in mm -hmm. by the government. All right, but this money, um, once everything is put in place, where will this? Is this money somewhere? Is it safe? Is this money safe that um, you know for the lecturers? Uh, I, I think uh, when this, you see, this money is with the government. Mm -hmm. So as soon as that money comes, then uh, uh, it will be uh, deducted and then uh, actually given to the pension plans that mm. we have. Mm. Yeah. All right, let's just talk about the impact of this uh, particular strike. As a, a vice chancellor, you're in a good position to just explain to us the impact and the effect of uh, this particular strike. Maybe you could just take us through that. I think uh, two months of closure of the university, mm -hmm. the negative implications are far-reaching. Uh, some of them are financial. Uh, Betty, you know, uh, last, last, uh, last year, mm -hmm. we, had, uh, we went through a very difficult time. We closed the university three times. And uh, because of this, we were not able actually to finish our semesters. Mm -hmm. Uh, for Kenyatta University, we started a semester in September, and in December, we had to actually close the university before we completed the semester. So when it came to January, we asked them to come and uh, continue with the semester. And remember, they had already paid. So when they came in January, we could not ask them for uh, more fees. Those who are living in our hostels, mm -hmm. they came and stayed there for free mm -hmm. for two months, which is actually was very, very, very expensive mm -hmm. for us. Then when we started now the second semester, as soon as they started paying, then uh, uh, the strike actually uh, uh, came in mm -hmm. and then uh, we all stopped. People had already paid mm -hmm. school fees and uh, they were not learning. People had uh, you know, paid for rent, they were not learning, so they had to resort to going back home. Mm -hmm. And uh, Betty, again, I want to say this. Kenyatta University has a very strong brand. And because of that, we have attracted a lot of foreign students. We have more than 40 foreign students in all our, uh, you know, our programs. And you can imagine for two months, these students have been at the university without doing anything. Sometimes I had to go and talk to them. And to tell them to be patient. Mm -hmm. uh, the other impact, as an example, which I can give is mm -hmm. that um, in Kenyatta University, we train teachers. And normally, we have these teachers going for teaching practice mm -hmm. in May. We had posted 4,600 uh, uh, you know, uh, students in all over the country mm -hmm. to go for their teaching practice. But because there is one major subject that they cannot go out without having done. That is teaching methods for the, uh, you know, the subject that they are supposed to teach. Right. Then this May, the students could not go. We had to cancel that. And uh, we had already spent like five million trying to post them and try to prepare the people who are going to work with, uh, with them. All right. So that has been very, very difficult for us. All right. Let's also talk about a question that many parents are asking. You know, they, this, uh, these students have not, not been in school for some time now, a number of months. Uh, now it's two months. What happens to the school fees that they had paid? Will it be uh, pushed forward? What happens to that? Uh, uh, Betty, what we are trying to do is that uh, we have come back mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we are teaching. So what we are going to do, we are going to adjust the semester. Mm -hmm. First of all, for Kenyatta University, we are going to miss what we call the third semester. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are going to now try to complete the second semester, finish in July, and uh, that will mean that uh, we are not going to ask uh, the student to pay uh, more. Mm -hmm. We are just going to extend the semester by, uh, you know, uh, I, I think uh, about seven weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Going back to the strike, the, the lecturer strike, do you feel that there has been 
commitment from the government, uh, of course, uh, by extension, the ministry officials, because uh, you know the, one of the uh, lamentations they have is that uh, even when it comes to negotiations, sometimes these negotiations do not happen, or uh, the CS is not the person who comes, you know, to actually hold these negotiations. That other, um, you know, people who are not really at the level that the lecturers would want are the ones who come to participate in these negotiations. Also, considering that it has been two months. I think, uh, uh, Betty, we are all Kenyans. We know what we have gone through. Mm -hmm. You know how much this government has spent. I think the government is fully committed to actually trying to resolve this issue. I also feel that uh, sometimes uh, the union are demanding too much and uh, not being patient enough uh, because uh, uh, having gone through what we have gone through, uh, probably the asking of a, you know, immediate, um, you know, um, a CBA to be concluded after mm -hmm. we had just concluded another one in December. To, to me, that was asking too much. Of course, they have a right to mm -hmm. demand for better services. Mm -hmm. And I think that... Uh, uh, probably the, um, uh, the officials need to so such and probably try to make the demands, you know, uh, more reasonable. Mm. Now, in terms of uh, probably thinking that um, the government, particularly the officials in the ministry are not uh, committed. Yes. They are committed. Myself, before I became uh, the vice chancellor, mm -hmm. I have been a, a deputy vice chancellor in charge of administration. And uh, one of my mandate was to negotiate with the union. Mm -hmm. So I know uh, the issue of saying that uh, probably the people who should be uh, negotiating uh, probably at the level which they should not be, uh, to me, is not a true. Normally, what happens is that mm -hmm. uh, Kanzo, although it is the employer, mm -hmm. it is not the one that really negotiates. It is the management. And in management, mm -hmm. the deputy vice chancellor in charge of administration and finance, mm -hmm. these are the people who engage the union. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly what is happening. All right. Yeah. I want to take in a few questions here. Some also are... Uh, uh, directed to you. Um, okay, so Yats Dendex, I think he's a student at Kenyatta University. You say, good morning, Mr. Inaina, and Betty, kindly ask the Vice Chancellor, for how long are the classes uh, taken before exams, since the main problem in KU is assumed it is, um, the exams are next month. Is that time enough? Like, but you mentioned that, you know, the, the, the calendar will be adjusted to fit in the examinations. Yeah, Betty, we have already started uh, adjusting the, um, the semester mm -hmm, dates. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are saying, if we continue the way we are continuing, mm -hmm. we still have our semester complete mm -hmm. the way it should be. And we should be actually sitting our exams mm -hmm. in late July. Mm -hmm. In other words, we have a semester which is about uh, 15 weeks. We have lost nine weeks and we are going to recover. As I said, mm -hmm. what is going to happen is that we are not going to have the third semester. Mm -hmm. The second semester will take uh, what should have been a third semester. All right. So we'll be able to cover everything mm -hmm. and do exams before we start the first year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which in is going in September, yeah. because that's also another question I'm seeing here. All right, uh, Vice Chancellor, thank you very much for uh, coming to the studio. It has been a pleasure having you. Um, uh, for the parents who are watching at home and, you know, they have their, their children, you know, maybe in the rural areas, are they free to bring their students back to school? Betty, we have already indicated, mm -hmm. and I actually made a player mm -hmm. on Sunday mm -hmm. Nation. Uh, where we said we are open, okay. we are going to start on 7th, mm -hmm. and the students have started coming back. We are using uh, the student leaders. Mm -hmm. You have uh, uh, actually seen the student leader 
making a prayer to their colleagues to come back. Mm. So we are actually urging the parents mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to send back their uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, students mm -hmm. who have not actually uh, reported. But I can tell you mm -hmm. more than 60% of the students have reported. All right. Thank you very much, sir, for speaking to us. He is uh, Professor Paul Wainaina, the uh, Vice Chancellor of Kenyatta University. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. All right. So uh, as we continue with our conversation, I'm seeing quite a number of tweets here um, with regard to a Twitter poll. Remember, we are asking you if it's time indeed that uh, the unions call off the lecturer strike. A uh, number of tweets, I have to say. Um, all right. Uh, let me just sample one or two tweets here. Alan Kiptalam, you say the government is not doing enough to end the lecturer strike. They have told a lot of meetings. They have hold a lot of meetings and there is no outcome. Uh, by now, the lecturers should be should have been given a counter offer, uh, and we, the students, get back to classes. We are tired of studying at home. All right, thank you for your comment. All right, somebody here uh, by the name. Uh, all right, we have Oliver Wesonga. You say the government is dead. Let don't sympathize with the students. We are all uh, citizens struggling to make ends meet. We can fight in future. All right, interesting comment there. Eric Wainaina, you say, in as much as the union should call off the strike, the teaching fraternity should get what they really deserve. There is a very delicate balance that should be struck, else we are setting a bad precedence in our nation. Thank you for your comment. I'll continue to sample very many comments I'm seeing, and thank you, we appreciate all of them. We'll get back to that conversation in a few minutes. But uh, for now, so... We want to uh, get back to a story that is uh, currently developing and I understand that there is a demolition that is taking place. I understand if we can just... All right, so that's happening in Westland. Civil unrest is expected in Westland's market as a semi-permanent structures near the Curio market, which is normally opposite Sarit Center, roundabout are being bound, are being demolished, as you can see on your screens today. Um, and I'm sure you've seen those uh, structures if you have been to Westland's, right at the roundabout opposite the Sarit Center. Um, normally, it has quite a number of uh, Curio shops and small traders. We also have food stalls in that particular market. And as you can see, that is being demolished. And uh, we understand that uh, Mark Namas is going to be joining us shortly. Of course, the, the owners and of course the traders who normally um, operate within that area are very disgruntled, uh, saying that indeed that is where they feed their families from. But as you can see there, um, it's, a, it, it's another situation there that uh, we'll be speaking to Mark Namas in a few minutes just to give us an update of what, what exactly is happening right now.
Ja, Right, as you can see, the ex excavators are really rumbling. Um, uh, those are the shops really uh, at uh, the uh, Westlands uh, roundabout. This is just right after uh, the Oil Libya petrol station. I'm sure you know about those, uh, uh, you know, the, the, secu the shops there, the curio shops, a number of traders there, like I mentioned earlier, uh, people who normally sell a number of things, uh, mostly to tourists who normally um, uh, just operate within that area. And as you can see, that is happening on the left side. Um, of uh, that stretch of road if you're coming from the main Westlands roundabout, uh, the shops there being demolished there. But we understand that um, there was a notice that was given and it expired two weeks ago. So therefore, the notice was given to the traders uh, so that they can remove their wares. Um, we're not sure if most of them were able to do so, but indeed, the time came today, and two weeks later, um, the, the, the demolition really is already underway. As you can see, a number of Kenyans just milling around there, and I'm sure some of them really are the people who have been trading in that part of uh, Westlands uh, area. Many of them just uh, looking and just uh, just watching the excavators as they continue to demolish. We'll be having our reporter on the ground, Mark Namasa, to tell us more about this. But for now, though, we want to just take a short commercial break. We're coming back in a few minutes. Remember, we have quite a number of stories that we're following. One, of course, is uh, what is happening, that tragedy in uh, Salai. Um, and, of course, we'll be speaking to our Elphus uh, Lagarde to give us more detail. Remember, we spoke earlier to the governor, uh, Lee Kinyanjui, who just explained to us and described to us the situation there, 450 families been rendered homeless and of course the Red Cross uh, KDF, we also understand, together with the county government, um, of course working hard to ensure that uh, also the people who are still buried under the mud um, are rescued. Alright, it's a story that we'll continue to focus on and of course another one is what you're seeing on your screens a few minutes ago and that is what's happening in Westlands the demolitions uh, that are currently ongoing. Don't go away, News Centre continues in a few minutes, we'll be right back. Thank you. 